Hi there, and uh, welcome to my top 20 games for the Amstrad. And uh, this is the first video I've done where I'm actually uh, talking over it. So um, I'm dreading hearing back what my voice actually sounds like, and uh, hope it don't sound too annoying. Um, yeah, uh, actually, I was blimey, I meant to put this video online back in June, because um, it would have been 25 years since the uh, CPC 464 came out. Um, but um, I don't know, time got away from me, and I kept fiddling with the video. Um, so here it is, it's just my uh, personal choice, what I think are the top 20 games across the Amstrad, CPC and Plus range, including GX4000. Um, so I'm sure you'll disagree with some of them, or agree, I don't know, feel free to comment. Anyway, number 20, which is uh, Grisor. A lot of Amstrad fans uh, love this game and rate it really highly, I'm one of them. Um, but it's only at number 20 in my list because um, I think a few of you will probably mind that it only has a flip screen scrolling and it doesn't uh, properly scroll, which it loses a lot of marks for as it does for uh, not having sound effects with the music and I think it's missing a level. Um, but don't let that put you off. As you can see it's got uh, gorgeous graphics and colours, really really smooth and fluid animation and most importantly really really tight controls. I think it's the best conversion on the 8-bit home computers. So that's Grizel. So on to uh, number 19, which is uh, Renegade. And as you might be able to tell, it's by the same programmers and graphics artists as uh, Grizel. This is as close as uh, you're going to get to an arcade perfect conversion. And um, what I love about this game, uh, just like the arcade original, um, you've really got to plan your moves because these guys are going to gang up on you and they're not just going to stand there and uh, wait for you to punch them in the face. I chose this over its excellent uh, sequel, Target Renegade, uh, purely because I think it's just a lot more fun and it's got that real sort of uh, pick up and play value to it that I still keep coming back to uh, every now and again. So yeah, on to uh, number 18. Which is uh, Head Over Heels. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to be honest, um, I've never really given this game uh, much time of day. I haven't really played it that much. But um, if I didn't put it in the list, um, I think I'd be probably be lynched or something. Because uh, a lot of people would probably put this as uh, one of the best ever games on the Amstrad. So at some point, I'm really going to have to sit down and play this properly. But it's a real uh, massive, immersive sort of uh, puzzle, explore them up, collect them up type thing. You've got two characters, I'm playing, uh, I think it's Head there, you've got another character called, called uh, Heels you can switch between, and if on the same screen you can sort of combine them together to solve puzzles. I think this guy can jump a lot higher, and the other guy can move faster, so um, it's a real real taxing on the old grey matter there. Uh, brilliant game, um, but anyway let's move on to the next one, which is uh, 17, which is uh, BAT. Uh, it's a French made game, um, but don't let that put you off, it works perfectly fine in English. It's uh, one of the earliest examples of a point and click adventure, sort of set in a futuristic Blade Runner-esque kind of world on an alien planet. As you can see, you're controlling that crosshair and you can sort of talk to people. Uh, so you can see a speech bubble thingy appear there and uh, can ask him a question. That's a cyber cop telling me there to buy by the law. Okay, we're just gonna, we just moved into the uh, toilets there. and. Um, a click of a fire button, you can do all sorts of kind of things, like uh, um, we're just looking around there, and I think I've probably just searched the urinal. <laughs> okay, anyway, we're going to move into that back room there, into the cubicle, which is, I meet a guy there, which is sounds a little bit dodgy, but he's going to give you uh, all your information about your mission, some goodies and stuff. Anyway, uh, running out of time, because of YouTube time limit, uh, check this game out, it's massive, it's fantastic, it's brilliant, blah blah blah. Anyway. On to 16, um, which is Elite, and uh, yeah, you'll probably find this game in uh, most people's 8 bits uh, top 10 list, probably, because um, it was a stonker on all computers, and the Amstrad uh, version was no exception. I think um, from watching other uh, videos and other systems, I think this one runs slightly slower than the uh, BBC and C64, um, but it's hardly, hardly noticeable. So yeah, anyway, it's a perfect conversion onto the Amstrad of uh, the classic game Elite. It's one of the greatest games ever made, um, and it was one of the very first games to uh, put you in a massive, immersive, open-ended universe where you decide your fate and your path you're going to take um, as you rise to the ranks of Elite, which is the ultimate goal. Anyway, number 15, um, which is uh, Shinobi. 
Richard Applin's programmer. He also did the awesome double dragon conversion. And uh Mission one. Oh yeah, some sample speech there. Um so Richard Applin's a real uh, hero to Amstrad fans. Um especially this is why I like the guy. Uh I mean he's gone the extra mile to put sampled speech in there. But um as you can see it really shows off the Amstrad. It can do stuff like really smooth multi-directional scrolling with music, sound effects, colourful graphics. It's just one of the best examples on how to do an arcade conversion and still keep it fun. Anyway, um, next on the list is number 14, Batman the Movie. Ah, cool, cool bit of music there. Um, anyway, let's get on to the game. Um, several different levels, you've got platforming, like this one, you've got a driving uh, level, driving the Batmobile, you fly the Batwing on uh, level 4 I think it is, so there's a puzzle level as well, so it's a good example of an ocean movie license, um, giving lots of different um, variety of gameplay, um, especially this level, um, again, like Shinobi, just uh, lovely smooth scrolling, fast colourful music, sound effects, it's an awesome film tie-in. Anyway, number 13, Navy Seals. Now, um, this is on the GX4000 or Plus machines, if you don't know what they are, they're basically um, enhanced um, new machines of the original 464, 6128s with enhanced um, colours, graphics, hardware scrolling, sprite scrolling, um, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, quickly about the game, um, another Ocean Movie license. Um, this one pretty much stays the same for each level, but um, it's great fun. It's also probably one of the hardest games um, on the Amstrad, so it's got a real challenge. Um, I keep coming back to this one again and again, like the others. Anyway, number 12, <laughs> and uh, another GX4000 Plus game, um, another Ocean Movie license. Uh, again, like Batman the Movie, follows the route of um, platforming section, shooting sections, and the puzzle section. Um, Robocop 2, like Navy Seals, is rock hard, um, and I guarantee the first time you play this, especially on this first level, you'll die so many times, trust me. Um, I'm, I, it looks like I'm doing really well, it looks really easy, trust me, I've had lots of practice on this, and you can uh, see the whole game um, uh, on another of my videos, I'm on my first playthroughs, I've played this through right to the end, so do persevere this game, it's not as hard as it seems, just a bit of practice. Uh, and you find a really rewarding experience of this one. Again, marvellous colours, graphics, blah blah. Um, okay, on to number 11, which is Super Cauldron. Now, this was released very, very late into the uh, Amstrad's life. I think it was 1993 when this came out, and uh, probably was one of the very, very last uh, commercially released games on the Amstrad. Now, as you can see here, um, you may think it looks like a Plus or a GX4000 game. Actually, in fact, it's running on a 464 here. Um, well, actually, it might be a 6128. I think the 464 might have been missing some of the uh, sound effects or music or something, but it's basically the same game. And uh, it's just amazing. Um, it was actually um, programmed by this guy called Elmer Krieger, um, who basically appeared on the Amstrad scene very, very late on, like 92, 93, from out of nowhere and uh, just produce these amazing games. No, sorry, excuse the uh, noise in the background there. There's some problem with the game being emulated. That doesn't appear in the game. But anyway, Elmer Krieger, um, he really, really pushed the Amstrad to the utter limits. And here's a, just a brilliant example of it. From a machine released in 1984. Just look at all the effects there and what he managed to achieve with it. Anyway, I'm running very, very short of time because I'm having to keep these uh, quite short to get in with uh, YouTube's uh, time limit to get the top 10 in one session. Um, so this is number 10 which is uh, Turrican and uh, I've chosen Turrican over Turrican 2. Um, uh, people think Turrican 2 is uh, the better game but for me um, I got annoyed by the uh, the main sprite being too large and when he runs off the side of the screen he runs off too close to it so you're running, sometimes running straight into a bad guy coming in the opposite direction and it's just too easy to die and kill yourself. Um, to me, they're good as each other, but I prefer this one slightly because of those reasons. But um, anyway, Turrican, brilliant game, and it's a brilliant conversion from the uh, um, C64 original. It's not quite as fast, but it's still speedy, and I think it's got much better use of uh, colours and much better graphics. And uh, apologies for the audio going out of sync. 
Anyway, see you in the next part, which is uh, games 9 to number 1.